Let me, let me give you some, some examples here. 1962, I was still pretty young. I was the year of my bar mitzvah. I was in eighth grade, social studies class. In fact, we had it in the library because I think it was so crowded. We put in a classroom. Mr. Burak, I'm sure he doesn't mind because I'm sure he's probably deceased now. Mr. Burak, this is October 1962. said, Well, boys and girls, I'm not going to see you tomorrow. Well, we were naive kids in 1962. And we, all, and we already had Columbus Day holiday earlier in the month. It was, was it a holiday? It was a holiday, Mr. Burak? No, no, we're all going to be dead. This was the Cuban Missile Crisis. And this is incredible. This is a, a social studies teacher telling eighth graders that we're all going to die and I'm not going to see you tomorrow. And I remember that so vividly. Like my sister even told me the story how she was in high school. She said, I, I didn't do my homework because she figured, what's the point? But what's so amazing about this is that everyone, virtually everyone, has accepted this. I mean, they didn't like it that they were all going to die in a nuclear holocaust. But the values, the myths, really, I, I would say, of the Cold War were so imbued in us, so, so, so there, that no one questioned this, that it was, it was better dead than red, as they said back then. And we sort of accepted the idea that a nuclear holocaust was possible, and no one ever even challenged what was going on. And even today, the standard view of what Kennedy, President Kennedy was, you know, was, was in the office then, what he did was good. Right. We were lucky, as it turns out. We know facts now that, that, that we were very, very lucky. That, and what our, it worked out okay in the end, but not because of any great genius on the part of the, uh, the American government. There were a lot of misperceptions there. And that, to me, was the first political event that sort of you know, stood out for me.